Farewell to the Surface, the podcast, where we discuss life beneath the surface. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, this is Farewell to the Surface Season 2. I think this is the third episode. Um, I know I haven't been on here for, for a few weeks. Um, we're, we're finding our flow and our rhythm for this next season, and I think we're going to have a, a lot more consistent episodes coming out. Uh, it's going to look a little different, I think, this season. Um, but I'm excited today. I have my my friend, Pastor uh, Abraham, is here with us again. How are you doing today? I'm doing amazing, my brother. How are you? Doing good. I'm doing well. Amazing. And, uh, you know, it's always a good time getting together with him. And, and so I think today we're going to be uh, discussing uh, process, the process to the promise. And I think that's a huge theme. And I think that is a huge uh, part of this walk as, as Christians and a, and a huge part of walking with Jesus is the process. And, and one thing that I've learned over and over again is that it the mountaintops are very short if you if you mm. hike a mountain that little tip of that peak is is not as broad as the base and so mm. it's i'm finding that there's a lot of time in the valley as well and so i think uh part of that process is is us thinking that like we're just in a hike up once and then we just stay there you know mm. and it's, it's different valleys and different hills and, and um and so we're gonna be going bouncing around a little bit but just to give a little bit of premise uh for i guess a couple of scriptures that you know came to mind was numbers 11 through 14 and i'm going to read just a, a real quick yes summary of just kind of what was happening within that time if you look at those chapters you know and then we'll go a little deeper into process and 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 i know uh, abraham has a lot to share and so um so if we if you read numbers 11 it starts off and what it's saying is that you know uh moses god had told moses to uh create two trumpets basically one of them was supposed to be a trumpet to blast and another one was supposed to be a trumpet to alarm. And one of them was to call the congregations of uh, the, the tribe into congregations, different tribes altogether. Right. Mm. And then there was an, there was a separate trumpet that was used as an alarm for them going out. Mm. And so what we see is that while the sound of unity and the alarm of freedom was being provided, the noise of complaining from foreign members began to occur. And an ungodly craving spread among the people. The weight of their sin fell on Moses alone, who complained to be helped. And God gave his voice and his spirit to 70 to prophesy. So what we see right there is we see that basically that while the sound of freedom and the sound of, of unity was being forged, and while Moses is pounding out these trumpets, among the members, there, it was says there was the foreign members that were a part of the tribes. They began complaining about quail and saying, we can go back to, to, to Egypt and we want the quail, we want the meat. And so this, this, uh, this sound, this noise basically began to fill the camp of, of, a, of an ungodly craving, uh, idolatry, and looking back to Egypt and complaining and murmuring. And then Moses, he says basically, God, this is all falling on me. He, he's saying, what do, I, what do I do with these people? And, and the way that God deals with it is he, he says, all right, Moses, I'm going to take a little bit of your spirit and I'm going to give it to, to 70 other mm. uh, elders. Mm. And so they all begin to, to prophesy. And, and, and basically after that, though, God says he, he gives them. He says, I'm not going to he says, I'm going to provide the meat more than just a day. I'm going to give them 30 days. So it's coming out their nose. And so God provided the quail and the meat of idolatry. But it brought them into the graves of gluttony. And among those who craved, the plague, the plague came at the consumption. They didn't even get fully digested in what they were, they were consuming. And then after that, we see that now, because these people had prophesied, Aaron and, and Miriam, they started to get prideful. And the reason I say that is because then they looked at Moses and said, well, we prophesied too. And mm. they started to feel like, well, we did something Moses did. Wow. So now we can go at his marriage. So they start to talk about his marriage. And what happens is it, it, it led to, uh, to uh, Miriam being cursed. And, and basically Moses had to take the place of intercession and meekness. And he ministered intercession and mercy, which resulted in a cleansing. And that period, basically what, what, what I'm going to wrap it up, this little comment up with is that that whole period led to Miriam getting cast out the camp for seven days and it held back their progression for seven days. Mm. And so that whole story, I mean, there's, there's a lot in there more, you know, but, but that whole story is this process of just seeing God having a plan for, for advancement, mm. 
Mm. And then murmuring comes into the camp and everything that came from that and that was birthed from that mm. is, is pretty crazy. And so I, I know I said a little bit there and, and so I'm, uh, but that's going to be the premise of where we're going today in the topic. And so I'll let, let you jump in a little bit. Amen. Amen. That is, it's so profound looking at um, even the trumpets Moses made. Like if you're a man of God, you, you would really understand this better dealing with people. Mm -hmm. And I believe mostly when the Bible talks of trumpets, it's not really talking about the instrument necessarily, though that is what they did, but it's a voice, a voice that comes to correct mm -hmm. at a certain time and a voice that comes to direct at a certain time. You can tell that some of the trumpets, they said, if it's blown, we're going to do this at this time. If that is blown, we're going to do that at that time. So God has a voice or a message that he released at different seasons. Mm -hmm. And you got to be able to understand that and one of the problems with these people is that looking at their life is like a born again experience they are born into this life they don't know how to move they are their whole life 400 years the bible says in the book of genesis chapter 15 god comes out of nowhere tells abraham that i'm going to give you a blessing and the blessing i'm giving you is not just going to be with you but it's going to be a transgenerational blessing and you look at this blessing that God is giving Abraham and you see that it's not just a blessing for him, but a blessing that is transgenerational, that is going to move on from generation to generation. And God want to give this blessing, but he says, I'm not going to give it to you by just giving it to you. I've given it to you as the man who embodies the promise and the blessing, but you are not going to see the blessing. You're going to die, but you'll see that going to enjoy the blessing. Mm -hmm. But look at the process. The Bible says that Levi paid tight in the loins of Abraham. So the seed that was in Abraham started to connect with the promise that God had given to them. But God intentionally took them to the promise, uh, to the e Egypt for a reason. So that after they had suffered certain things, when God delivers them, they would really appreciate this thing that God has done for them. But you look at them in Egypt for 400 years. They began to think that Egypt was a good thing. The life of oppression. They had built a type of love for pain, mm -hmm. for slavery. Yeah. And you could see that in their mindset. So when God, after they were delivered from slavery, it's the same thing with being born again. We were in the world under the rulership of Satan and Pharaoh and Egypt and the Israelites. It's a typology of the children of God. Right. We, so when we get born again, it's the same experience. And you see that they are, they are brought out of this life of oppression that God had declared to Abraham that they are going to go in for 400 years. And God was trying to teach them because you look at the life of man, when God did what he did for Adam, he did not really appreciate it. He just took it and he didn't know how to treat it and he lost it but these people god took them through pain for them to know what pain feels like they went through the pain they, they came out but now one of the biggest problem that man could not sustain was to hear god's voice and to walk with it mm. because when god was dealing with adam there was a trumpet the bible says every day in the cool of the day the sound will come god will come in the cool of the day why do you think God was coming there? He was coming to teach, to direct. I believe greatly that the Garden of Aden was a temple, was a house of God. And God was leading Adam into something even greater. It was God leading him. So you can see that Moses now comes. Everything happening in the, in the Old Testament is like a movie. It's like a typology. It's like a shadow of something that is to come or mm -hmm. even something that, that has already happened. All right. So now God, Moses comes with a trumpet and he's directing them here and there. But you could see one of our biggest problems as human beings when it comes to the process moving from a place of pain, oppression to a promise. One of our biggest problems is the fact that we don't pay heed to the voice of God. Hmm. And this, this, is, this, is problem, this is a problem everywhere. And, and I don't know... When it comes to adhering to the voice of God, what, what would you say about it? Because mostly we struggle as people. 
Well, I think it's it's interesting because that God even mentions that in in within those texts. He says with Moses because they they start thinking, oh, we prophesy, we prophesy. But He says yeah. the way that I dealt with you is different. With Moses, He said we spoke mouth to mouth. Mm. It was it was different. So I think there's different levels and, and dimensions of hearing God's voice mm. too. It's like if you hear it from from afar, it's just a it's just a, a you know a shimmering light versus it, it's there. And so it's like I I used to wonder why did um. Why was God so uh, like harsh with Moses when he he ignored his voice mm. when he said he said speak to the rock now I hit it and I said he he I mean it was it was like God sat in front of him he knew his he knew that he knew that he knew his voice mm. it was like there was no confusion mm. and so I think that uh, I think sometimes. Uh, that that I think the the more that the more that God knows you hear His voice clearly, the more responsible you are for mm. neglecting it. You know, so there's more of a weight on that on that uh, correction. Mm. Um, and I think that was part of the frustration was that you know Israel was they're hearing through Moses, you know, and that's like mm. Moses felt that weight. I I always think about it. I'm like, man, I would have hated to be Moses. You mm. know, he had, he had that whole nation's weight on his on, back. Yeah. You know, it's like. Um, and so I, but I would a hundred percent agree with you times yeah. that, you know, God has told me to do something and I listen and, and I see the results of it and times he told me to do something and I didn't and I see the results of it. Yeah. And it really is the make or break of it all. If you don't hear, you know, you're, you're in trouble. That's so true because what we need to understand is that to go to where your promise is, you need to have illumination, light, mm. Mm. light has to come. And the Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 105, his word is is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path so you can see what god is trying to teach them is that he's trying to tell them that the journey cannot begin until you see the light mm. until the light comes mm. because the journey is totally dark right so when the light comes i've been in different um situations whereby i remember when i was in africa i remember when there is no light my grandfather used to have like a lantern, like a lamp. He would switch it on. And you can see that you are going on a journey and your only hope is this light. Yeah, yeah. Your only hope is this light. Though my grandfather can send me and say, hey, go get this for me, maybe like two miles away. Mm -hmm. And without the light, even as you're going, you're afraid. Because mm -hmm. sometimes a snake can slither around and you're mm -hmm. like, man, what, what, what was that? What was that? <laughs> so it's like, the lamp you 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 receive is the blessing for the journey mm. if you don't have the lamp you can wander about for for years mm. imagine going on this road maybe you know the destination is two miles away right but you don't have the lamp you can wander about you can face forces you can encounter snakes creatures demons powers you can encounter things you can nev never deal with yeah but if you hear the trumpet, the sound, which is his word, his light, that is directing you guys. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's do that. You are moving with the light of God. So Adam was receiving the light of God. And the light was leading him. The Bible says the light will always talk to him in the cool of the day, directing him. But the day he lost touch with the light, darkness covered them. Mm. And so now... In the book of, as you rightly said, that God said to you guys, I speak to you through dreams mm. and visions. But Moses, I speak to him face to face. Mm -hmm. So God is speaking to all of us. And one of the things I want everybody to understand is that there is a word of God concerning you. That if only you find it, it's going to begin your journey. Mm. So he said the same thing to Jeremiah. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I sanctified you. I ordain you. He spoke certain things about him. Mm. So there is a word of God concerning the journey you want to go on. There is a word of God concerning the path you want to take. And God said in Job 33, 14, he said, For God spoke once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Right. So now the situation is that God is speaking to the process that mm. you want to go on or the journey. God is speaking to you. Right now, he's with you. But the, the first thing he's doing is he's speaking, speaking, speaking. Because the voice of the Lord is the sight you need. Mm. His voice is your sight. When God speaks, it's your sight. Because without light, there is no illumination. Mm. So 
when you listen to the testimony of Elihu in Job 32, verse 8. One of my favorite, this one, one of my favorite chapters, yeah. You see, Elihu said, the spirit in a man, that spirit in you, it brings you this understanding. But this understanding, he said, the, the spirit inside of you, when God breathes upon you or that spirit, it brings you deeper understanding. And so you got to understand that as God is speaking, I listened to your testimony. You said something. I, I loved it. You said when you went to the realms of God in heaven, his breath was coming to you. Mm -hmm. And every single breath was the life. Yeah. It's like the minute that breath is done, you need more of it because it's the life that sustains you. Mm -hmm. It's the same with the word of God. So I believe greatly that process, if it's going to be successful, from moving from one point to another, another, the first thing you need is his light, mm. is his word. Mm. It has to come and you have to be able to implement the word. Mm. Mm. If you are not able to implement God's word, I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes... One day I was praying and the Holy Ghost said, why don't you pray for the spirit that will help you to implement every single word God has told you? Mm. Mm. He told me that, don't you know that is more better than just praying for more things? Right, right. Because even what he told you at first, you have not done it. Right. So how do you continue the journey if you have not made the first step on what he told you to do? Right. And so I believe greatly that now the people are in they are making the journey and moses moses is directing them but here comes the enemy he comes to sabotage the voice mm. he comes to sabotage the message and the messenger yeah and you see you are going to go through this as a leader leading people yeah one people are going to attack your message people are also going to attack you yeah I've gone through that so many times. I've gone through that so many times. But you are the only one who has received the light that you are leading the people with. Mm. And so Moses had the light. He's leading the people with this light. But here comes Miriam and Aaron. Right. And this is what you need to know also. That is why Jesus never started any ministry with his own brothers. Because mm. if you have a vision, the first people who sabotage the vision and the first people who will never believe in the vision are the people who are closer to you. Yeah, I, I think I agree with that. I think uh, there was something I was going to start sharing with people, some news mm. I had, right? And I was mm. about to share it with someone the other day, and the Holy Spirit said, no. Like, keep, keep, Draw keep back. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, it's it's funny. I've had to learn that as as I've grown, you know. But um, but it, you just reminded me of a scripture because it says, uh, first off, it says in Psalm 119, 130, it says, the unfolding of your light. Uh, uh, unfolding of your word gives light. Mm. So it's yeah. like as yeah. God was speaking, the, the light, the yeah. light was was uh, mm. lighting the path. And then uh, Psalm fifty six and thirteen says, "For you delivered my soul from death, mm. yes, and my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of life." Yeah. And so that's it's it's all throughout. That's why I like the Psalms is always talking about that. Yeah. You know, the light of life and yeah, yeah. And David David under, understands process more. Yeah. So one time. I told the Holy Ghost, I wanted to write a book about process. And I prayed and fasted and I said, Holy Spirit, show me what scripture should I go into that it, it will teach me process. Yeah. And he said, Psalm 23. Mm. I said, this is popular. Everybody knows Psalm 23. <laughs> I want something that is <laughs> like <laughs> not popular so that I can bring a new revelation. I know. But yeah. he said, no, Psalm 23. And I said, why? He said, look at the whole flow of the prayer. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. But watch what David also said in Psalm 1 verse 1. He said something profound. He said, Blessed is the man who does not dwell in the counsel of the ungodly. So that, that is the first thing, the counsel of the ungodly. Mm. So what is speaking into your life? The first thing that you need to do to help your journey to where, wherever God is taking you is whatever is counseling you. Hmm. It's very important. Hmm. That is why God is going to take Adam on this journey, but he forsakes the counsel of the Lord, then he, he drops dead. Right. The people of Israel, they are going on a journey. They are trying to forsake the voice of the Lord, but Moses stood in the gap right. and interceded for them. 
Yeah. God did not destroy them. That was yeah. the difference between them and Adam. Yeah. Now, if you ever want to go from one location to the other, whatever, it might be marriage, it might be business, it might be ministry. The first thing is what is counseling you concerning the journey you are taking? Mm. If it's marriage, what is counseling mm. you for the marriage? You've never been on that road before. My mm. brother, have you married? Like, have you <laughs> have you been in this word married before and now you are marrying again? No, your marriage is your first time, right? Went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once and, only. <laughs> and this is the first time you are ever married. The same thing with ministry. I've never been a pastor before. This is the first time I'm, I'm a pastor. And so, even if you are doing business, you've never done business. This is the first time you are in business. And mm. this is the first time you are on the earth in, in mm. actuality. But the, the question is, what is counseling you? Mm. I, I had to get, while, while you're talking, these, yes. these scriptures are coming yes. to me. So Let's it's go. Proverbs 24, 6, for by wise counsel, you can wage war. You know, and, um, and so for wise counsel... Thou shalt make thy war. Yeah. And in a multitude of counselors, there's there's safety. That's so true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, it's it's interesting because I I think that um, it even goes back to to the the story we were getting into is that they 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 negated the the counsel of Moses and uh, the the Lord and they started taking counsel from the people around mm. them that were that were murmuring. You mm. know what I mean? So I think there's something interesting about just even the voices you know the i mean I, we all we all know that like your atmospheres can affect you the voices that are around you and so i think it's interesting how the 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 every time that you kind of start to stray away from mm. from god's counsel mm. it, it it always will lead into to ne a negative counsel you know like it never it never goes well always always my brother yeah. one, one thing we all need to understand is that Every single thing that God has for you, it can never come to you if you disrespect his word. Mm. Mm. I've, I've known that. I've always seen that you can try to bypass the word and receive whatever God was saying and, and get it without going through his word or letting his word be the light that leads you to that place. Yeah. The minute you get that thing, you lose it. Mm. And this is one, one of the things everybody needs to understand because a lot of people especially receive prophetic words. This is why their prophetic word doesn't come to pass. Mm. Because they think that just receiving the word that you're going to be a great man, you're going to be a great businessman is enough. No. That word that came to you that we are going to, like I see you, my brother, and I'm in the spirit. The Holy Ghost is upon me and I see a prophetic word about you. Man, I see you. I see you doing great things. I see you in Nevada. I see you in Massachusetts. I see you doing this. I see you doing preaching. I see you becoming a great man of God. I see you on the television. I see you doing great things. If somebody gives you that prophetic word, hear what I'm saying. It's very, very important. Hmm. Make sure that you have connection with that person to direct you until that prophetic word comes to pass. Hmm. Hmm. If he doesn't, if you are not in any relationship with that person and he just gave the word, after the word, seek for somebody who has ability in guiding you to your vision because he also hears from God. Right. Like the Bible says about Uzziah in Second Chronicles. The Bible says so long as Zechariah was around him and Zechariah was able to understand visions, anytime he would dream, he would go to Zechariah. This is the dream I had. Show me the meaning. Mm. And he was, the Bible says that he became a king at age 16, but he was directed to his promise. He became a very good king because he had somebody who had understanding into visions. So this is what you need to understand. If you receive a prophetic word, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. It's never enough. Just receiving it because there are so many people who go to prophetic meetings. I know pro pastors who are prophets. And you know the funny thing? They prophesy deeply. But when you go to their church, 90% of the people in the church, the prophetic word does not come to pass in their life. Mm. One day I was listening to one prophet and he, he was very angry at the congregation because he prophesies deeply. He can tell you everything about you. But the problem is all the things God has shown him concerning those people has never come to pass. Though the prophetic word is upon them, but it's never come to pass because when people receive a prophetic word, it makes them sluggish and lazy. Mm. Because they think the word is going to perform itself. 
they think the word is going to come to pass by itself. But this is what also prophets need to understand. If you are a prophet, pray that God gives you the ability to give direction. Yeah. Because after you tell me that I'm going to be a man of God, what is the, the next step? What should right. I do? What are the directions? Right. So there need to be somebody who's always giving you the light that will direct you on the path, who is leading you all the time. And if you don't take care, and that person happens to be your brother or sister, you might downplay his anointing mm -hmm. and never get to the promise. Right. And that is what many people go through. Most people, they are really anointed and God has a word for them that they are going to do this, but they forget to know that the one with the direction is their mother. Mm. The one with the direction is their father. The one with the direction is their brother. And they see that, mm, I'm never going to talk to my mom about this because mm, you are too familiar with the anointing. Your mom yeah. might be a good teacher. Your mom might be a good business person who understands and can give you direction. It can be your classmate who you don't respect. They are the ones with the direction. So if you receive a prophetic word, you need to wear that prophetic shoe to get to that prof pro prophetic land. Yeah, yeah. If you don't wear that prophetic shoe, what is the prophetic shoe? You need to be able to hear the words on that journey. Because if God is saying that you are going to be a man of God in Houston, and that is what he said, on that journey, if it's going to be a 20-year gap before that word comes to, comes to pass, there are words unspoken in that prophecy that was given to you. Right, right. Somebody has to have the ability to unveil all those messages for you that you're going to marry because the word just came that you're going to be a man of God. But your marriage is in there. He did not see that. He did mm -hmm. not talk about that. Right. You have to go to maybe a Bible school. He did not talk about that. You have to maybe sit under a man of God and be trained. He did not talk about that. Yeah. So, because all these things were not told to you, you might just begin a church. Mm. Just because you, were, you, might, you, might, you might just tell, your, tell everybody around you, man, I'm going to be a man of God. Man, this and that. And you leave maybe whatever you are doing and you go to Houston and you start a church. And you struggle for 40 years wandering around mm. because the direction is not there. Mm. So this is what happened to Miriam and, Mo and Aaron. They thought that they also see dreams and they also have visions. And they were trying to attack the one who the, the prophecy came to. Right. And the directions were also given to him. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's interesting because I, I know for me there's been, you know, there's a, there's a couple people in my life and you being one of them Amen. that... Um, I always have to kind of come to and just if it, whatever God's speaking to me about, whatever mm -hmm. I feel like I'm getting led to, I always have to kind of come and, and bring it to y'all and, and, and just be like, you know, what, what do you think? You know, what do you think about this? Stay in mm -hmm. touch, you know, mm -hmm. and me and you talk pretty regularly and I, I stay pretty, you know, I think you, you're aware of a lot of things going on in my life. But I think it's funny, too, because even just to kind of change the direction a little bit, mm -hmm. let's go back to process mm -hmm. is. You know, a lot of people I'm finding more and more, they don't understand, um, they don't even, like sometimes you get a word, maybe like you, you got called to be a man of God, mm -hmm. you you know that God called you out of what he called you, you know, you were going to do, um, be a doctor. Mm -hmm. and, and so you already had kind of a, a end vision in a way, right? Like mm -hmm. you already saw the kind of where you were going, at least if not yeah. in detail, you saw the, the direction. Yes. And I think a lot of people I, I talk to feel like they're just wandering completely. Like mm -hmm. they don't even know where to begin and like what am i like if you you have to have a process into something like the mm. process into the promise but they don't even know what the promise is mm. and um and i think you know i always tell people when it comes to destiny when it comes to calling and pro promise and stuff like that i think there's different ways to look at it there's different types of them but what would you say to people that really don't even know what their promise is. And I'm not talking about the promise of salvation or the promise of, you know, uh, of the spiritual blessings in, in, in a sense, but um, the promise of like, I don't know, what, what, what's the promise of my destiny kind of thing? Okay. How, would you, how would I start that process? Okay. What, what you need to understand is that who you are, where you are supposed to be, is already in you. It's in your heart. Mm. It's hidden in you. But the eye of your heart has not been open. If the eye of your heart is open, you don't need a prophet. You, know, you don't need anybody to tell you who you're going to be. Right. So you need the eyes of your heart to open. Most people are only used to this physical eye. But that is not real sight. Real sight is in your heart. Right. And it's vision. Mm -hmm. Your vision is in your heart. 
your dream is in your heart where you want to be is in your heart the things you you wish you had is in your heart everything is in there so you don't really need a man of god mm -hmm. so the bible really says that in first in in first corinthians you see the mystery eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart of man what god has prepared for those who love him but he said he has revealed all those things to your spirit mm. it's inside your spirit right but that mystery is inside your heart inside your heart so the bible says that if if god is going to show me something about you mostly your spirit communicates that to me mm. i don't know it because i know it you tell me so your spirit will tell me that this is what you don't know you personally don't know but yeah. your spirit because i have matured my spirit to a place i can tap from your spirit and receive right, right. information from you and talk to you about your own information mm -hmm. you get it yeah, yeah so now if you mature your spirit your spirit will begin to communicate to you yeah. first what what are the promises of god for you right because it's already in your heart is already in your heart but the eyes of your heart has to be open you yeah. need to have a vision you need to have a vision you need to build foresight right insight and also receive hindsight yeah this is the way you come to the place of your promise so you might say nobody has ever i don't know what i want to be i don't know how my life is going to be in the next five years i don't know do i need to go to a psychic because there are so many people who go to places like that to get to know what is ahead of them yeah, yeah. God read. have you have you ever seen people like that before oh yeah yeah and i, I mean i went to a psychic years ago you know way really? before I, yeah years before i got saved and, and i remember even then though i remember i was like man this is like real basic just general stuff and uh you know but i, I don't i know a lot of people that have gone to them and it's just it just seems like there's a it just seems generic general stuff mm. and there's no there's no wisdom or or any type of way to apply it which is mm. like i just see this happening i just see that and so i think like if uh with with uh what, what paul told timothy or timothy would you know wage war with the pro the prophecy the prophecies that, huh? and so it's like i think i'm i mean i'm this something i'm learning more and more is how you have to really stand on that that word like it's not it's not gonna like you said passively come it's like you really have to war with it and you really have to stand on it and take yeah. it you you have to apply and be uh um a co-heir yeah. with, with that word as mm -hmm. far as just not just oh okay god's gonna do this and, and and i think that there's probably only been one time that i could think of a word that kind of came like that where uh someone said something and it happened mm. um but even then I, I think that i was i was still laboring for it you know like i was still it's not like you just oh okay i'm gonna go to sleep yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so everybody has a promise everybody uh -huh. God is the one who gives that promise. And God is the one who has all those good things. He knows that he, the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts I have towards you. Mm -hmm. So he, there is a, something God has towards you. And it's not like he's about to make it. He's already done. Yeah, yeah. But he, he has hid it in your heart. So when his spirit comes to live in your heart, he begins to guide you yeah. and unveil things to you. Right. And begins to reveal things to you. So I believe greatly that if anybody one wants to know what is their purpose or what is the promise that is ahead of them they should first awaken their spirit man mm -hmm. that is why most of the people who do great things are the people who can really meditate mm. meditation meditation the people who can really meditate on what's it called the promise in them yeah i know a lot of people who do great things is because they take time to dive into themselves. Right. They take time to dive in. And one of the biggest problems is that mo most other religions do meditate, but most Christians don't. Mm. And that is the problem. That is what God told Joshua. You're, th the funny thing is, when I saw the Lord Jesus and he was speaking to me about my calling, one of the first scriptures that walked towards me was jo Joshua 1 verse 8. I saw it walking towards me. Mm. And so, like, if you want the promises to come to pass these words you need to find it and you need to meditate upon it that's funny that's one that was like one of the first scriptures god gave me too if you are called for like a whole year i was just always in my head i'm just, telling you yeah yeah if you are called 
to do something for God, definitely Joshua 1, verse 8. 8 yeah. If you don't hear Jesus say it, you open your Bible one day and it will go then to speak to you. Yeah. You get it. So yeah. everybody, I believe strongly that everybody has a great promise, but we get to, we have to know that is either a man of God or somebody knowledgeable of the things of the Spirit brings you into who you are or you personally come to the place where you are awakened unto your calling. Like Moses, the problem with Moses in this scripture right here is that the promise was in him, mm -hmm. but he was running away for his life. Yeah, And you can tell that the Bible says that God told Abraham it's going to be 400 years. But if you check the life, the time span, it was 430. Yeah, Because when the promise was 390, it entered into Moses' heart. Mm. You get it? So the promise when it was 390, it entered into Moses' heart. And when it entered into Moses' heart, he did not know how to express what he was feeling in himself. Right. So there was something telling him that, hey, these guys are supposed to save them. But he did it the wrong way because there, were, there was no mentorship. There was no training. And that is why the Bible says, a hare, as long as he's a child, mm. he's, mm. he's not different from the servant. But... He's placed under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Mm. So God has great things for you and your process where you're supposed to be, but God is going to put you under certain trainings right. and build you for a while. It, your training can be 20 years, 30 years, whatever. You see, Jesus also went through the same thing. 12 years old, he found expression like Moses. Mm. Moses found expression. Something was telling him, you're supposed to save, save these people. Jesus too, something was telling him 12 years old, you're supposed to preach. And do you know what? He went to preach. But what he did was not in excellence. Mm. That is why his mother found a problem with what he did. Mm. So mm. what Jesus did was right, but at the wrong time. Right, and right. in the promises of God, you don't receive what God has for you at the wrong time. It has to be at the right place at the right time. Right. If it comes to you at the right time at the, at the wrong place, it's not God. Yeah. It's always, it has to be at the right place at the right time so jesus the mother said mm, you have an ability but it has to be trained it has to be built mm -hmm. it was not gold yeah. if people find problems with your ministry it means that you have not been refined by the refinery fire mm. so mm. Your, your your training you have to still go through the training yeah. and jesus went through the training so 12 years we don't hear from him again until 30. Mm. i think another thing that's interesting is that your process don't look like my process that is true I know it's like I think a lot of people think that like if we're called to the same thing, our process should look, our process mm. has to look exactly like this. No. You have to, you know, and that's one thing I'll, I'll never forget that part. Whenever I started getting saved and I was in the jail, there was a guy in there. He he he, he was, you know, a Christian for years, and so he knew the Bible really really good, right? And so he he'd be sitting there, and, and any time I had a question, I'd come to him and I'd ask him. All right, I said, oh, this happened. Uh, and he, I remember when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I spoke in tongues, I talked to him. He said, no, no it, it don't happen like that. Whoa. I would I'd come to him, I said, God's telling me this, I think through the word, and, and I would tell him this. And he said, no. So he, every, I'm coming to him with what God's doing, <laughs> but he's discouraging everything mm. because he's viewing it through mm. through his lens and mm. through his process. How God did it for him. Yeah, I said, no, don't worry about that. No, God doesn't do that. But meanwhile, I look back a year later, and God was prophesying to me through the word. Mm. And everything he said that would happen, happened that, that, that mm. next year, mm. the way he said it. And so I, it hit me like, oh, man, that, that was part of, you know, my process. Mm. But he, he put his process was not, on, on yeah. me, you know. And so, so. That's, so, that's so true. Yeah, yeah. That's so true. You have to also, like before we started this, you were talking to me. You said something about you need to find your stream. It's very important. Mm -hmm. You need to find your stream. If you're a businessman and you're called to um, buy gold and sell gold and do all those merchandise, find somebody who has already been on that path yeah. and let that person mentor you or direct you or teach you. Yeah. Because yeah. your stream, like what you said, how God is going to deal with you might be different from how God is going to deal with me, but there is somebody whom God might have dealt in a similar way. Right, yeah. right. But it's hard to find those people, but... You, if God blesses you and you are able to locate th those people, it's best. Yeah. So that you are trained by them because their ministry is just like what God is calling you to do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and yeah. sometimes those people will not make you um, um, do whatever you want to do. Like yeah. Eli Elijah, he was a mean guy. He was a very mean. He was mean. Yeah. Eli Elijah was a mean guy. Look at how he was dealing with Elisha. Uh huh. And if you don't build adaptation. 
to adapt to the nature of whoever God has called you to uh, to mentor you, you will be frustrated. Mm. You have to adapt to them and humble yourself. Yeah. Even if they are angry, don't look at their anger. Don't look at whatever they are doing. Just adapt and learn because your journey might be different, but his training is very important. Whatever or whoever is training you might be important. Just submit yourself and learn. Yeah. And that is one of the things Aaron and Mir- Miriam, they never learned from Moses. Moses just came, told them what God wanted them to do, and they all, Moses anointed them, and the Lord the Lord gave grace to all of them to work with Moses, and they thought they were on the same level with Moses. Right. Yeah. So right. I think that when we check the chapter 10, we have really expounded on it very much. But let's go to maybe chapter um, 11. Chapter 11? Chapter 11, where, whereby they said, man, we are tired of this food. Yeah, yeah. We need something more. Yeah. Well, let's see. What, what, what verse is that? Um, I think... Numbers 11. Numbers 11. Yeah, no, it's number 11. What, I'm trying to see where it first comes into... Oh, verse 4. It said that... Um, so so now the ra- the rabble that was among them had a strong craving. So it started out with a craving... Mm. And that and the the rabble is what is the the um, foreign people. Yeah. So, the rabble that was among them had a strong craving, and the people of Israel also wept again and said, "Oh, that we had meat to eat! We remember the fish we ate in Egypt, that cost nothing, <laughs> the cucumbers, the melons, the g- the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at." Mm. You know, it's funny because I think about uh, um, the the interesting thing about Egypt is that it was a promised land. It just wasn't Israel's promised land. Yeah. <laughs> and so Man, that's deep. <laughs> so it's like they're always looking back at, you know, because like I look back at um, things that that I thought I wanted in my life before mm-hmm. I, I fully like, you know, have it uh, yielded to the call on my life. So things that I know were were promised lands, they just weren't my promised land. Mm. And so for someone else, it is a mm. promised land, mm. you know. Mm. And uh, and so I think that there's just something so beautifully, you know, just just true. Whether it's wrong or right, it's just true that there's something about us that wants to go back to to that Egypt at mm. times. And whether it's not the the enslavement of Egypt, but a a, a part of Egypt. Mm. And and like they said here, they said we had this stuff and we, and we didn't have to pay anything. Mm. There, and I think that's that's an interesting thing to think about is that it was it was it was given to them at the at the price of their destiny. You mm. know, like they didn't have to, they didn't think Man. they were paying nothing. Man. But it was at the it was at the cost of their destiny and their prom mm. their promise. And wow. So, and and the fun I'm I'm writing a book, and the book I call it um. I call it um, the devil's arena of art. Mm. It's gonna come up, but what the Holy Ghost taught me about what we are talking about right now, the Holy Ghost told me something very profound. And you know, He said, "You can be delivered from Pharaoh, but still, I don't know what the word." but still be ferrorized or mm. you can be deli- delivered from demons and still be demonized. Right. You don't have any demon in you, but you can be the demon. Mm. Mm. If you live with a, somebody for too long, you become those people. Right. You literally become them. Say a demon lives in you for 30 years. If the demon leaves you, the demon can go, but you can be that demon. Your personality will be the personality of the demon. Mm. Your behavior will be the behavior of the demon. It's like slavery. When people go through slavery for a long time, they become mentally enslaved, even when their slave master is not there. So though the slave master is gone, but they have they themselves, that is why it is believed that even after slavery for many years, there are people who, because they went through that pain so much so that it became something they loved, mm. something they, they, they had endured. So even when the oppression was not there, they became the oppressors. Right. No, it's, I had I have a I have a friend, um, and and we were homeless together. Mm. He was living in in the the Oxford house with me, and mm. I remember whenever he he came into the Oxford house, we'd be there, and then but he would stay still stay mm. as if he was still homeless. Mm. So he would still stay in the same place, Man. stay with the same people. So it'd be like all day. Oh, he's not at the house. Where is he? Uh, at the time, I'd have my, my I'd have my bike, right? So I'd ride my bike around looking, and he and I'd find him 
it, it, and I and I asked him. I said, "You know, you have a, a home now. Mm. Why do you keep coming? Like this is where you still live, you know." And so that always that always uh, comes to my mind, you know. And and actually, I'll share this with you. That's I was in the jail like three weeks ago. Mm. And so I'm in the jail three four weeks ago. I've been going there for a couple weeks. And this 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 time I went in there. I said, "God," I said, "Why do I feel restricted?" And like I feel like kind of mm. restricted. I said, there's something about this place that's like, I, um, you know, like, I don't feel like I have the same grace as mm. outside. And all, and God spoke to me and he said, it's because an aspect of your soul still identifies with being an inmate here. Mm. So there was a part of my soul that was still recognizing as being an inmate there. And so I would feel restricted and tied. Right. And then once he brought that to my my remembrance and i dealt with it in my soul now it's like now i go in there yeah and it's a whole completely different thing and yeah. so just, just so you know because the minute you were saying that the holy ghost just was ministering to me right now if i don't know you felt his presence yeah uh -huh. he's speaking to you whatever he's telling you to do on that level do it uh -huh. because it's if you don't do it it's gonna make you unbalanced yeah it's, yeah. Gonna, it's gonna really mess you up so yeah. do it what he's telling you to do because he has a message for those in there but that thing right there yeah. that you are feeling deal with it yeah 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 deal with it now but yeah that's so true but it's, it's it's so true in the sense that right now we are all having god's ordained promises mm -hmm. but sometimes the oppression we have gone through begins to be the reason why we cannot move forward we have trust issues we have certain emotions it's like we are when we begin to see um a similar situation like egypt we get what's it called restless and we begin to move in a very disorderly manner now you look at people right now who have gone through maybe jail or whatever they have gone through stuff especially there are, there's there are a few people i know even because of what the devil took them through even the way they eat, they still eat like when they used to be. Mm -hmm. There are people who they need to take time with the calorie and just eat. Like you take them to the restaurant and you want, man, just talk and eat. But they're like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like <laughs> in Egypt, that's how you eat. Because you only have five minutes break. Uh -huh. And your, your master is going to come again and, and push you to work. So you get five minutes, you eat like, mm. so there are so many people, they are, they are free now, but they are still eating like, they are in yeah. Egypt. There yeah. are so many people, they are free now, but they are still acting like they are in, in Egypt. Yeah. Because the power of Pharaoh has not been broken from them. Though they are free from the location, but the influence of their master is still in their heart. Right. It's like their soul is still scarred. It's yeah. Still, the soul is still, is still there. It's so sad. And, and mm. when the Holy Ghost told me that, I said, whoa. He said, a demon can leave you and yet you can be demonized. You can be the demon. Hmm. you can become the demon hmm. you because of your mentality there is no demon there are so many people who do crazy stuff and they say a demon made me do it it will shock you that they go to heaven and the holy ghost will say there was no demon you really did it you did <laughs> there was a lust in you uh -huh. because that demon came and he was with you and he built a, a lust to a level hmm. so now there is no demon in you you are complaining that oh a demon made, made me do it the devil made me do it no you were delivered, but you have been demonized. Mm. You have a degree of wickedness in your heart mm. that has to go, that has to be released. That is why when he told me that, I said, whoa, this is so true. This is so true, I tell you. So sometimes before you do evil, you invite evil. There, mm. there is something in you which will call evil because you miss it a little bit. Yeah. And so now you see the people, they begin to complain, what type of food is this? What because especially when you become a Christian and you are experiencing the newborn again experience for the first time, if you don't take care and you are in that process whereby God is feeding you with the manna, the sincere milk of the word, and you begin to feed on it, feed on it, feed on it, maybe a year or two, if you don't take care, you'll get tired. Because mm. you fed on the milk of the word for so long for so long, for so long, and now you, you won't meet. But if you don't take care, you begin to complain and murmur. You mm -hmm. begin to complain and murmur because 
Um, and this is what every Christian should understand. We are not bound to a church building mm -hmm. necessarily. But God takes us into places for us to be trained. Mm -hmm. This is what we need to understand. You can come to Mountain of Life. And all that God will use me to do for you is to build you into a realm of the apostolic ministry. Mm -hmm. And maybe you need, you need a prophetic ministry. I might not be able, I can build you to a realm whereby I help your office to grow to a certain degree. But if you go to a certain degree, there are teachers that God can introduce to you that you can also listen to. Mm. But this is what has killed the church because there is no unity. You can come to the mountain of life and God will build you to a degree. And when he builds you to that degree, after a while, you, f you find that it's like you have grown, you have outgrown the place. Mm -hmm. Do not make it a big deal to say, I think I want meat. Mm -hmm. I think I need more. Don't leave that place by complaining and murmuring. Right, right. It's wrong. Keep your hands clean, your mouth Keep clean. your hands yeah. clean and talk to God and go to, let's say, the man of God who helped you grow to that degree, you go to that man of God and you say, Sir, uh, we've been, I think I've become your message. Mm. I have become your message. I, I walk your message. I, I, I have become a product of your message. You have done a great work in me. Finding that in you, be truthful to the man and say, Sir, I've seen this man of God. He's saying certain things and I feel like it's helping me to, to become like more better. Can I seek permission from you to learn from him? Mm -hmm. If you do that, I'm telling you, every man of God with the Holy Ghost will release you. Yeah. And so that you continue the journey. And this is why many churches, people don't grow. If the church was united, I'm telling you, look at what Paul did and what Apollo did. He came to plant, Apollo came to water. And that was why the early church was really matured. But in, our, in all, in, but in our churches, a pastor can be teaching on repentance, 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 and that is the only thing he teaches about. But he doesn't know that there, there are classes of the spirit. Mm -hmm. You go from one realm of understanding to another, to another, until you become a perfect man. Mm -hmm. That is what Jesus is coming for. Perfect church. Right. You got it. So, when the Israelites came out from that location, they were longing for more, but it was just a simple prayer. Lord, we need more. Mm. We want we want meat. But instead for them to ask meat, they were complaining in their prayer. That's what many baby Christians do. Instead for them mm. to ask God for something, they complain rather than praying. Mm. Many people spend one hour complaining to God, thinking they are praying to God. Mm -hmm. mm. And that's the biggest problem of Christianity, where somebody can be praying, Lord, if you don't do it, I'll kill myself. Mm -hmm. Lord, if you don't do it, I'll die. That's complaining. Mm. Man, most people are complaining with their prayer lives, and they think they are praying. Man, mm. learn to ask God. And the, the way to ask God is to seek for the wisdom to ask. Yeah. The wisdom to ask will help you. The Israelites, mm. they did not have the wisdom to ask. Mm. Mm. That was the problem yeah it's interesting i think about all the different tones i've had in, in prayers right and it's like sometimes it really is that just quiet just humble just uh lord just and then it's, it's quick you know True. versus like you, you might you might you, you might be just praying in tongues going go, go, and then it doesn't come but then you you very just quiet simple and it come then you have times where you do need to go you know <laughs> there's all the different ways it's like yeah that's so true that's so true i love i love i love it when god gives you wisdom to ask him for certain things because right. it feels good knowing yeah, yeah. that you ask god the right thing the right way too yeah? yeah and so looking at the israelites they were complaining about manner what is this what is this what is this is the journey every person on the journey of even marriage you get to the point where your marriage is in that room of like manner mm -hmm. It will shock you. Mm. Whereby you feel like, I've enjoyed this for too long. Man, I need something new. Mm. If you don't take care, you cheat on your wife. Mm. But it's a simple communication. Please, let's do things differently. Yeah. It's a simple communication, but there are some men, when they see that they have exhausted manner and they feel familiar with manner, all that they have to do is mm. to talk, be sincere, 
Don't fake it. Don't yeah. complain. Most of the men who cheat are the men who complain. Mm. They murmur. Mm. Sometimes you think that, oh, hey, wifey, we have done this for too long. I think we should change things. And mm. Instead for you to talk and have communication, you begin to complain. Sometimes you even complain without telling her in your head. Mm-hmm. You are like murmuring. And it's a room for the devil to show up. Mm. It's a big room for demons to appear and, and show you diverse options. Mm. And that's when you begin to cheat on your wife because you, it, it was just a simple thing that you had. You, so sometimes you cheat and your wife will come and she will ask, she will, like, really, like, you did this with this person? Man, if you had told me, I would have done this for you or done that for you. Why did you not tell me? Mm-hmm. So just being honest and, and, and just upfront about it, yeah. And the Israelites, God had married them. And you, you know that, right? God was married to Israel and they were cheating on him. Mm. They were cheating on him. Mm. with different gods they were sick they were saying oh when we were with this um husband it was good it felt good when we were when we were with pharaoh it felt good we were eating varieties and this and that but now god is keeping us in this place and we don't enjoy diverse things and they should have just asked god because he had a plan for them mm-hmm. he had a great plan for them on the promise or the land they were going it was going to be beautiful with diverse things but he was trying to teach them how to appreciate what he's giving them how to appreciate a miracle to be grateful to what he was doing most yeah. people are not grateful most people are very very ungrateful mm. ungrateful and mm. the next step will come when you become grateful to the earlier step yeah mm-hmm. yeah no i think i agree with that, everything you're saying you know i think it's definitely that uh and even with uh even within your relationship with God, you know, like everything is, I, I know, I know that's one of the main steps being grateful with where you're at now while staying hungry for the more, mm. you know? So true. So true. Yeah. So true. Numbers, Numbers chapter 12. Let's go there. Let's go to Numbers chapter 12. Okay. There is a lot to talk about on mana, but I don't want to go deep. That's what I'm saying. There's a, we're at, let me see, we're at like an hour now, I think. About an hour now. Yeah. So Numbers 12. Okay. So this is Miriam and uh, Aaron's thing. What did you, was there a specific part you want me to read? Yeah, it? so so one, as a minister of God, especially as a man of God, mm-hmm. we want to stress on what Miriam and Aaron did, that leave vengeance to God. Right. So you find where God kind of like came in and spoke about the, 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 the message on Moses, who, who Moses is to him. Okay, so, and... Hear my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make uh, myself known to him in a vision. I speak with him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak mouth to mouth, clearly and not in riddles. And he beholds the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. Hmm. Mm. And when Amen. the cloud removed over the tent, behold, Miriam was leprous like snow. Mm. It's, 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 it's sad how, how uh, this one I'm speaking to men of God and people who, who work for God. We got to be very careful of the way we treat the anointed people. If somebody's anointed and you are dealing with those people, be very careful the way mm. you deal with those people. Because mm-hmm. there, there are some people, you might think maybe you are better than them. Mm-hmm. Because maybe you, 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 God showed you a vision here. You said this and it came to pass. Or you, you did this and God moved here a little bit. There are people, the jealousy of God is upon them. Mm. You don't touch them. Mm-hmm. Even speak against them. Because they are faithful to God in ways that you don't know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there are some old men of God. And they might not have a big church. Mm-hmm. And you might sit under them as a man of God. Mm-hmm. who probably have a vision to build a mega church like a thousand thousands of people but this person you are under has only maybe 50 people mm-hmm. but when god sees that man the jealous eye of god is on that man mm-hmm. and say you are a son of that man of god and you come to a place whereby you feel like disrespecting him mm-hmm. and you do that is the wrong thing right you never do that yeah because the man is faith, even the 50 God has given him, he's very faithful with the 50 and he's doing a great job with the 50. And because you are familiar with him, 
you might be forced to talk bad about him. Mm-hmm. And that is what most people go through when they begin to talk bad about somebody who is faithful with what God is saying they should do. Mm-hmm. The jealous eye of God will locate you. And when it, it, it locates you, it's not good. Yeah. It's not good. No, I know that's something that I get real. I'm very, I just, I just stay out of that. Like with the whole, there's, you know, there's people that like do the heresy hunting and yeah. oh, there's a false prophet. This I'm like, I just, don't, I don't even want to get my mouth near. God hasn't called me to be that guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going yeah. to stay out of that stuff. So yeah, I agree with you. I yeah. agree with you. Yeah. It's so true. And, and, and I would also advise anybody who is, um, a Miriam to a Moses. Hmm. I would advise a Miriam to a Moses. Women. See, sometimes women, if they are your brothers, uh, if the, if you are their brother and they've known you for a while, they, they think that the way you relate with them as a sibling is the same way when you are operating the anointing. Hmm. And it comes to wives too. Hmm. Wives, hear me. If your man is a man of God, be very careful the way you deal with him. And you have to be able to pick when he's in the anointing and when he's not in the anointing. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to check all those things. Because if your husband is in the anointing and you really offend offend him, something will happen. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing that happened with um, David when he was dancing. And the daughter of Saul said something bad. You see what happened to her? It's throughout the whole Bible. When somebody is under the anointing, be careful what you do. When they are under the anointing, be careful what you say. Be careful what you do. With Miriam, she said something. With Saul, uh, with David's wife, she also said something. During the time when he was under the anointing and he was moving. Right. And so, mostly I've seen that thing on women a lot. Yeah. That's why when men of God marry at a point in time, they just want to divorce. Right. Because their wife begins to talk about everything about the church. Why did you do this? With what? And the man was under the anointing and God was using him. But... They think that they are on the same pedestal, like they are on the same level with their husband and they want to talk and they want to say certain things that God has not given them the clearance to talk about. So you have to be careful that even if you want to talk to him, seek wisdom from God in dealing with the issue. So Miriam could have gone to God in prayer rather than attacking Moses. Yeah. And Aaron too. Aaron too. Because he was also in a certain position where he felt like, man, we are in this together. I also hear from God and all these things. I see visions. I see dreams. Yeah, yeah. Who do you think you are? Be very careful. It happens a lot in churches. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. It happens a lot. And the, the same thing, people might not see the end result of their actions towards faithful men of God. Hmm. They might not see it now, but it might happen after they are dead and gone. Hmm. And so you have to be very careful in certain matters that you don't attack who you are not supposed to attack. Rather, seek wisdom. That, that is what I always tell people. Seek wisdom from God. Don't yeah. act upon your impulses, upon your emotions, upon how you feel about the situation. Yeah. And also, I will speak to any Moses. What I will say to any Moses is that build love and strong love. Because in ministry, you are never going to say that it was smooth throughout and there was nobody like an Aaron in my life. There was nobody like an a Miriam in my life. You are definitely going to find those people. Yeah, they'll come. They'll come. All right, well, I think uh, I think we'll wrap it up. We yeah. had, we had like an hour now. Wow, wow. That's amazing. And it's, it's, it's funny because I know we could probably sit here for, and do like this for six hours and yeah. be a, be around. And so uh, we're we're trying to to, to hove in on, uh, yeah. uh, on on the process, but I think we covered a lot, a lot, uh, uh, definitely a lot. There was there was a lot of uh, extra stuff that was thrown in there. Mm. Um, so I hope everybody listening uh, enjoyed this episode, and and we'll definitely be back with some more. If you want, you know, send some comments. What what kind of topics do you want to hear? Yes. Uh, let us know what kind of things you want want covered, and, and uh, we'll make it happen. Amen. All right, everybody, have a good one. God bless. You want to uh, pray you. us out real quick? All right. Father, I speak to your sons and daughters listening to us today that, Lord, your spirit and your grace will rest upon them and that your power will begin to lead them. That you said in your word that we are kept by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray that your spirit will lead us. Even that the scriptures we were not able to go into, Numbers 14, 
chapter 24, he said, My servant Caleb, because he had another spirit and because he followed after me fully, him will I take to the promised land. I pray, O oh God, that your spirit will help us and lead us into the promises that you have ordained for us. And, O oh God, I pray also that you help us to implement every single thing you have said concerning us and every th single thing you are saying right now. I pray for anybody whose life is in a sphere where they are going in circles and, God, they are in the same pattern and it's like a generational thing their father went through it their mother went through it they are in a pattern they are going in circles like the israelites lord i pray that you grant them the spirit of obedience and you said in your word that jesus learned many things through the things he suffered he learned obedience lord i pray that you grant them the grace to pass the test of obedience and that you will begin to lead them from glory to glory from faith to faith i pray against the spirit of rejection and delay i pray that the lord god almighty will put upon you today the spirit of acceleration in jesus name amen 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 all right